Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how to interface your Raspberry Pi to Solo using the UART line for controlling the torque of a brushless motor with HAL sensors. So, as you see in this setup, I have my motor here, I have the power supply outside of this picture, which is set on 36 volt, which is the nominal voltage for this motor, this brushless DC motor. I have connected the power supply here. I have connected the Raspberry Pi to Solo through the UART lines of RXTX and the ground. And here is the connection of the HAL sensors from the brushless DC motor to my Solo. So as you see, the setup is pretty simple. The only thing you need to have between Solo and the Raspberry Pi is this connection, which is the UART line connections and the rest will be managed by Solo. So now in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to run the Python code within Raspberry Pi to send the commands and read feedbacks from Solo. And you're gonna see how the torque is controlled on the shaft of the motor. So let's dive into the details and see how this thing actually is done. Just before going any further, I need to emphasize that the connection of the HAL sensors and the motor wiring to Solo is important. And we have an article and video about this showing you how you need to set up the HAL sensor, the motor, and also how you need to calibrate. So before running this code, you need to make sure that the calibration of the motor and the HAL sensor is already done. The values are saved in Solo, the values of the offset of the HAL sensor's wirings and the connection. So before running this example, just go there. If this is the first time you're doing that, you need to calibrate the motor and the HAL sensor, and then the calibration value will reside in the memory forever, so you don't need to do it again. Then you can run this code, because if you don't do the calibration, you might have difficulty to running this code in a proper way. So just go there, make sure you calibrate your sensors properly, and then come back to the example. So here, as you see, I'm in Raspberry Pi environment, and now the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this folder that I've downloaded from the GitHub, for the solo and within the example file you have lots of examples you need to select one of these examples and you need to put it in the same directory as the source file so in my case i'm doing torque controller brushes motor with HAL sensors and using some little plotting so this is my example and if i open it i will see a window like this so this is actually the code written in python that I can use to communicate with my solo. So the initial part of the code is just dedicated to the address of the solo. What is the address of the solo in the network? The address for now is zero. Selection of the baud rate, selection of the motor specifications like the frequency, number of poles, and the, the rest of the things like current limit. And then you're gonna have two actually sections. You're gonna have the loop which is the forever loop that runs the code continuously inside. And you have the setup loop, let's say, or setup part that only contains the code that should be run only one time in the beginning of the initialization of the code. So in the setup section, you see that we instantiate an object of solo, and then we set the bout rates and so on. We try to establish the communication with solo by trying to read a value here is the bus voltage from solo and then once the communication is established we proceed to set the parameters that we set already in the initialization part above in the code like the pwm frequency current limit and then the next thing is this since we are sending all the commands through the UART line, we want Solo to operate in digital mode. We are not operating in analog mode, so we ask Solo to go to digital mode. We select the motor type, and after selection of the motor type, you can identify the motor. So once you run the identification, you're going to see a little vibration on the shaft of the motor, so the electrical parameter of the motor will be identified. And once the identification is done, we set Solo into operation of in HAL sensor, into the torque mode, we set the number of poles. So finally, we're gonna take a look at the IQ, which is the current that is actually acting in torque generation. And we're gonna see what is the initial offset of that current. And then we're gonna proceed to the loop. 
But before that, you need to make sure that you put solo into closed loop by pressing pin number five down. This is the only setting that you need to apply on the piano switch. Because the piano switch here in this example that will not have any other effect because we are in digital mode. The use of the other pins of the piano switch is good when you are in analog mode. But since we are in digital mode, the piano switch, these potentiometers, and also this input doesn't have any effect. So every command is coming directly from the UART9 here. Then, if you, we take a look at the torque loop, we will see that in the torque loop, I set two different goals for my torque, or let's say in another word, my, for my quadrature current, which has a linear relationship with the torque. So the multiplication of the quadrature current to the torque constant of your model will result in the actual torque of your model. So here on solo, you just need to set the torque in terms of quadrature current. So here I'm gonna set two different goals. The first one is 2.258 and the second one is 3.512. And in between, I'm gonna stop the motor. So let's first of all, take a look at what's happening, what's gonna happen when I run this code, and then I come back and give more details about this. So as you know, to run the torque controller, you need to make sure that actually there is a load on the shaft of the motor because if you run the torque controller without any load on the shaft of the motor the motor will accelerate to the maximum speed and this is due to the reason that there is no load on the shaft so the motor with a little torque can accelerate to its maximum speed to avoid that we need to lock the shaft to simulate the behavior so once the shaft is locked the motor will apply the maximum torque that is requested and we can see the torque plots so to do that, I will lock the shaft manually with this tool, and then I'm gonna see what happens when I run the code. So before everything, I lock the shaft, I turn on solo, and now I can run the code. So if I run this code, I'm gonna see the following behavior. I'm gonna see that the motor is getting identified, the initial torque offset is established and measured, the first target is set and then the second target is set. So if I stop the code just to see the behavior better and turning off solo for now because we don't want the motor to move. So as you saw in the code, initially after the connection went fine, we printed here the initial IQ offset or initial quadrature current which is actually acting directly on the torque generation and you see that there is minus 0.226 of offset on this current and this offset is pretty much stable all over the thermal region that this motor can operate or if you want you can calculate this dynamically and find out what is the offset but beside that initially in this code as you see we are asking solo to set the IQ on this value, which is 2.258 amps in quadrature. And you see that solo, after a little while, it could reach to this value. And you see that this value, it's minus 2.46. It actually has a little bit of difference with this, which is the offset we saw here. It's actually bigger because it's sum of this value to the offset. So, we have the target pretty much precisely followed, which is minus 2.467 or 46.6. You see that the accuracy is pretty much high. And then in the second part of the code, we stop the motor. So for a short time, the torque goes back to zero or goes back to the initial offset value. And then again, we set the new offset value in a different direction. So this time is a positive direction. We had minus 0 0.22 uh, amps of uh, offset. And here you see that the torque actually settles down in this value, which is again, if you consider the offset, which is on minus 0 0.22. So you see that the target is properly followed and reached. So we see that the torque control works pretty much nicely depending on the direction of the motor you have either positive torque or negative torque and depending on the offset you can see that the accuracy is pretty much nicely followed so this is a code i wrote in python to show this condition and you see that here we have also have a plotter that kind of shows the phenomena that happen here in solo and that was pretty much it
I hope this video was helpful enough to show you how Solo can easily interface with the brush SDC motor through Python with Raspberry Pi to control the torque of a brush motor properly and accurately. So if you have any questions or comments or if you want any new videos regarding this matter, please comment down below, subscribe to our channel and we will answer all of your questions. Thank you so much.